hello and thanks for joining us on tonight's edition of the show. This is Majority Caucus live on your multi TV, also live across the world on www.multitv.com and uh, forward slash stream. My name is Ali Dawood. Um, I do not know, but I had some difficulties trying to come to terms with uh, the purpose for which some bulletin was aired on a radio station. I do not want to mention the name. Last week, Thursday, uh, they carried the news that the euro bonds that uh, Ghana subscribed, I mean, floated and it was subscribed to, was heavily undersubscribed. And they also went further to indicate that the target, one billion, was never met. It was rather slashed to $250 million. This, the next day, was proven to be, uh, you know, absolute lies. It was an ill informed bulletin. But I've tried my best to try and contact the said radio station to see if indeed what they did could be an accident. I mean, we need to be fair. It could be a, an unconscious mistake and that perhaps they might need to, an apology, a professional one, unconditional, might suffice to cure this mischief. Um, so far, uh, it looks like nobody is prepared to uh, respond. But I'll continue to dig further. If we do not get this apology from this station, we would mention their names and then the appropriate uh, actions, of course, will be taken because uh, it wasn't good for the image of Ghana when the Eurobonds have been indeed oversubscribed, only for them to announce to the world authoritatively that it has been undersubscribed. Uh, that is indeed very sad. But tonight, though, uh, our attention will not be there. We will be focusing on what the government of the NDC has done in terms of the energy sector uh, for this country. Uh, I'm sure most of you now know that uh, the Dumso Dumso 10 has relatively, um, you know, you know, stopped. Uh, I'm minding my words very carefully, um, you know. So there has been some improvement, basically, to say. So tonight we will tell you all about the energy, and as to whether the press conference held by the MPP minority in Parliament is anything to go by, we would also will tell you the truth and otherwise of it. So welcome to the show. And tonight I have been joined in the studio by the communication consultant to the energy ministry i'm talking about mr edward bauer uh, he will take us through all the nitty gritties and all that you need to know about the uh, ndc achievement in the energy sector and so thank you very much sir for coming thank you for having me okay and uh, but le le let me just put it to you straight that with what we have experienced, I mean, this is not the first time we are experiencing Dumso Dumso. We need to be very clear in our minds. And the president did assure Ghanaians uh, in the run-up to 2012 elections that um, this thing is going to be a thing of the past. In your opinion, do you sincerely believe that the power sector is in crisis? Thank you, and then good evening to your, your listeners. Um, and viewers as well. I, and in fact, yeah, it, I'll be it's, talking it's, to, it's on radio, radio, mm. radio too. Okay, so <laughs> sorry. And then viewers. Uh, yeah. I think that um, in life we always have differences of opinion. Okay. And therefore, people who may see something differently, you will see it in another form. Mm. But from where I see, and by virtue of the fact that I have the benefit of knowing exactly what is happening within the NHS sector, yeah. my description of the energy sector, or particularly the power sector, is not that of crisis. Okay. Is that of good news? Mm. And why do I say so? I do not for a moment see, uh, for example, the generation aspect of it. Okay. Where we've, uh, in 2009, we had a generation capacity of 1800, uh, 1810, that's 1810 okay. megawatts. Now increasing to 2578.5 megawatts. That's significant. And somebody telling me that that's a crisis. I do not see, for example, the distribution sector, because I'm trying to take the three uh, functional zones of uh, uh, the power system. A distribution system that had in 2009, in terms of technical losses of 40 percent, mm. and now as at the first half of 2013, we're talking 21.8 percent. I don't see that as a, a sector that's in crisis. Okay. I don't see a sector where, since 2009, up to today, 75 percent of the obsolete equipment found in the transmission national grid mm. have been replaced as a, 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 a sector that is in crisis. Okay. I don't see a sector where, in terms of access rates. We've moved from 54% in 2009 to over 75% in 2013, her first quarter, or maybe first half of the year, as a sector that is in crisis. Okay. So from where I sit, 
the power sector is never in crisis. Now, I will definitely, mm -hmm. I would definitely, sorry mm -hmm. about that, mm -hmm. I would definitely have a, a feeling that seems to suggest that um, people equate the challenges we had since August 20, uh, 2012, yeah, 2012 as a result of the damage on the West Africa gas pipeline. Yes. As a basis for the fact that the power sector was in crisis. Mm -hmm. In fact, you and in your in your introduction you had made that very clear that this was not the very first time we we're having challenges at all in fact indeed we, we do know that somewhere in 1993 we got that in 1996 we got that mm -hmm. in 2006 2007 we got that and now we got this the previous ones were as a result of uh levels of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we so knew drought that. now this current one exposes yet to another risk factor and that has to do with fuel that's, okay. that's the natural gas that coming from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And we had consistently told Ghanaians, and I think the president had equally done the same thing, that the issues that we had was not as a result of the fact that we could not, we did not have the capacity to generate power, mm -hmm. but that we did not even have the fuel to even generate the power using our facilities. For example, when the plant was off, we did not have a single work, and that was 200 megawatts. Mm -hmm. In fact, 200, the whole of the three northern regions do not use up to 200 megawatts. Mm. So it gives you a fair idea about the situation that we find ourselves in. And we said that as long as we have gas from Nigeria, Nigeria. this thing was going to be a thing of the past. That's the first thing. People always make arguments that, oh, and I, I do know this morning I heard somebody say that the president said, read my, uh, uh, read my lips, yes. and nothing came out of his lips. <laughs> um, but the truth of the matter is that the president was saying that based on the fact that at least the factors that we had control over, we were going to take care of it. Okay. We had fact we had we had control over the fact that we needed to add installed generation capacity. That the president ensured that that was done, because within that period we brought in roughly around 300 and something megawatts into the system. Okay. All that the president was saying was based on the assurances given to us by the West Africa Gas uh, Company, that was supposed to obviously tell us that mm -hmm. when they were going to finish the pipeline. Okay. And these were timelines that were being shifted, but as about three weeks ago, when we started having the gas, I saw that you had some level of hesitation when you were telling the people that uh, mm -hmm. now the doom so doom so. Yeah, I, I want would to take it sure. categorically Good. that we do not have doom so doom so. Indeed, do again. I don't remember the and last yes, time I experienced yes. it. By so the way, yeah, that is the truth of the matter. The facts on the ground. Even as we speak now, we have mm -hmm. some of, our, for example, if you take the Senate plant, which okay. is in which is in, uh, in Tema, mm -hmm. we are not running it, not because we do not have fuel, but we have excess power that we don't need it. Mm. So we've put it down. That's good so news. that gives you a fair idea that now we have a stabilized system that we can rely mm -hmm. on. So anybody who tells us that uh, we have challenges in the power sector may not necessarily be saying the truth. But, 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 but the, the, the MPP um, accuses you of, uh, I mean the NDC government, of uh, not doing much in terms of uh, the installed capacity that you came to meet. I mean, they categorize, let, let, let me take a figure like, uh, for instance, they said, uh, since coming into power, uh, they installed about 650 megawatts in generation capacity. Uh, he's saying the claim by the NDC that they have, you know, added an installed uh, generating mm -hmm. capacity of 650 megawatts is not true, and that the actual fact is 160, in 165, fact, if you uh, like. In fact, um, I think that even the mm -hmm. six something is not. We have even gone beyond that, and I'm oh, going to okay. give you figures. Um, the usually it is important that people when when somebody says a village is far you should know whether it's far from where okay because you can say your village is far, very mm -hmm. far and i say of course it's not far from my village because my village is near so you need mm -hmm. to know and when the when the argument is made that for example um as a country since 2009 we've not added serious megawatts into our system you need to ask yourself okay what is the history that is guiding us in that for mm -hmm. us to be able to make those comparisons. Because you must always have a standard on the basis of which you use to mm -hmm. make that. Let me tell you, from 2001 mm -hmm. to 2007, until we got the energy crisis, not a single megawatt was added to the system. That's serious. In fact, in, the, in 1996, when the then president, Rollins government, realized that we needed to increase our generation capacity because in terms of our low demand, it was mm -hmm. going up. We realized that we needed to bring in thermal component to add to the Kosombo and then the Pung Dam. Okay. And so 
started the whole project of bringing the Takrade one. That's how the Takrade one, Takrade two mm -hmm. came about. The T one. So T one. So around 96, 97, the T one, the T one came on board. Mm -hmm. 313. Then by 1999, 2000, the T two came about 220, making 550. Mm -hmm. The whole idea was that over that period, we were supposed to have been increasing our generation capacity. Okay. And by our own projections, it is said that looking at the low demand forecast, that every year you need to add at least about 200 megawatts. And we're already behind. From 2001 to 2006, mm -hmm. nobody added a single megawatt. Mm. And in fact, this. I will tell you the truth that um, I had the opportunity, and if Honorable KT Amon is here, yeah, I mean he he, 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 he mm. can he can uh, testify because this one I had the opportunity of telling him that, and he agreed. But he, his argument, and his argument is that that was when the government was in hippic, Ghana was in hippic. Oh, from 2000 to 2006. So, no, that, that, so that cannot be an excuse. Hippic, so on the strength of that, they took their eye off the ball. Mm. But the truth of the matter is that these for six solid years. Mm. Assuming that you are supposed to be adding two megawatts to it, that means we are talking about 1,200 megawatts. Yeah. That was never done. Then in 2007, when we started having the energy crisis, mm. then we started running Helter Skelter looking for yes. energy. That was when a consortium of uh, mining companies okay. came together and put up a plant that was supposed to produce 80 megawatts. Okay. And that is what we call the MRP. That's the Mines Reserve Plant. Okay. That is exactly why. So apart from that, no plant was brought on stream until 2009, uh, 7 January when they left. So, no, no, just hold on. L I need to understand. So, technically, under the MPP... Only 80 megawatts were put. That was put by the miners, mining companies. So, I mean, I mean miners, yes, that this, obviously, yes, it looks like yes, they did not add I'm, anything at all. I am not... I'm so, not what is the basis of that, uh, that accusation? Asked. So, this I, is the I, point. I, I, so now, from 2009 up to now, up to today, yeah. I'm not adding the the two units of Buida will be coming on stream. Okay. But as we speak today, and okay. as we converse now, we've added 768.5 megawatts uh -huh. in four years. But, but they claim they started Yeah, so Buida. the argument they then mm -hmm. make is that, oh, these were plans that were initiated. My brother, Nkrumah envisaged that Ghana was supposed to be an industrialized nation. Yeah. And then therefore, he put in plans to get that done. As to whether he achieved or he didn't achieve it, at least there was a plan. Okay. Today, we cannot state that because Nkrumah dreamt that there was supposed, Ghana was supposed to be an industrialized nation and that we're going to target and ensure that we live a very good and decent life as Ghanaians. If today somebody who whoever took over from him never did it, you don't go blaming Nkrumah. You blame the people who did it, yes. who did not do it. And that's why today you hear people say that after 66 school, nothing happened. So everybody takes, anybody who ruled after 66 takes responsibility for mm -hmm. we not getting to where Nkrumah dreamt of. Okay. Issues of Bui, for example. Nkrumah dreamt that yeah, Bui was supposed to be one of the areas we were supposed to look at. In fact, President Liman also... You, you, you talk to very experienced people like uh, Kosi Prat and Co, who mm -hmm. had worked... Even, you know, Kosi Prat also worked at the Ministry of Energy. Yeah. And so people like them who are so experienced in the energy, and they will tell you that even before the overthrow of Nkrumah, uh, there were even contractors on site to, to, to deal with the Bui issue. But it yeah. never happened. Now you have a situation where President Kofo comes and he also goes about it. He starts the whole project. In terms of digging the ground to start work started in 2009 so you then tell me that because of the fact that you dreamt about the situation and now this mm -hmm. 400 megawatts it is no you who did it it is yes. I, we dreamt about it that, that, that is very sad. governance is a continuum uh, yes so if at the end of the day president rollins dreamt and realized that between 1996 and this and that we needed to add an uh, the thermal component to it and in fact added 550 megawatts and for six six solid years Nobody added anything to it. You then get up and say, look, oh, I started this, or I wanted to do this. So, therefore, you are the one who did it. I, I mean, it's just like um, sometimes, you know, this morning I was just thinking, and I was listening to one of the, the, the debates on that. And I said, you remember those days when we were in KG? You know, when you're a very spoiled brat, you go and say, this is mine, this is mine. Yes. You know that sort of thing. You, you, you see, the issue is that, assuming that when President Mills came and took over, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, President Jomahama continued. They had said that we're not going to start, we we're not going to continue this project. We're going to tell them this to stop. Mm -hmm. After all, for Nkrumah's case, when he was overthrown, there were already contractors at we to be able to start the project. Yes. But then, uh, what do you call it, uh, military junkers felt that, mm -hmm. no, we're not going to continue it. It never happened. Yeah. So the fact that the government has taken a decision to do something, and from 2009 to today, 
708.5 megawatts have been added to the system. You can't look no, into no, my no, face no, and tell me that they have not added anything. But, but, but you know, what, what surprises me most is mm -hmm. that in this, all, in this attack, this well-coordinated attack, mm -hmm. um, at a point that many Ghanaians thought that this press conference by the MPP was absolutely needless and without merit, mm -hmm. because they themselves have begun to experience tremendous change within the energy sector. Uh, so apart from the press conference being uh, baseless, it looks like that uh, it wasn't time even sensitive. And there was no single attempt to acknowledge even the effort of the NDC. I, 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 see, I hope that maybe we'll go into the issues of the petroleum we, we, that we, you we, mentioned. We're getting there. You see, if you, if you look at the 11-page document that was read out to the press, mm. I've taken the pain to read through the yeah. document. It was purely based on a write-up that seemed to suggest that the, person, the people do not even know exactly the energy sector. They have no idea. But I believe that they do. Okay. And I'm just... So it could be I say, Yes. I, I, I will not for a moment uh, underrate the, the intelligence and the knowledge level uh -huh. of someone like Honorable Katie. Yes, he has been a because deputy Because he has been a sector. deputy minister of the sector, and yeah. therefore he has very good in-depth knowledge about the, the, the sector. He's a ranking member... So the, the question energy. is, why would so he do this idea, to himself? The whole idea was... I don't know. I mean, sometimes um, if you have nothing doing, just make noise and let them know that you still exist. I think this is an absolute so, embarrassment on so this So the issue yeah. is that I think it was not a well-researched um, um, paper that they presented. I think that it was purely based on rumor. It was purely based on, I will always call, uh, parroted statements that serial callers do on radio. Mm. That people, they pick it and say, oh, yes, it so, do so. They say yeah. this. Then you also take it. Because I expect that if there's a press conference coming from the minority group from parliament, I expect, and particularly being addressed yes, by the ranking no member less of parliament, person than, uh, I, expect that, I expect that the, it should be something that can engage all of us in terms of policy direction and in terms of things that are facts. Mm. But when it is based, you make a very and I don't have the script here, but if you see yeah, a, have, a, a statement that it. it is uh, shrouded in corruption and in this and nepotism yeah, we, we, and we, other we, things, we, we, and those we, things, we'll talk without about substantiating it, mm -hmm. then I have a challenge debating it. I have a challenge debating it because then what you, 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 you tend to do is that you, uh, you give me an impression that the intention of the, what do you call it, the press conference was not to seek genuine answers for the yeah. improvement of the sector, mm -hmm. but was for another sector. Yes. Um, and I have always stated that I like debating issues when it because for yes. the, uh, if there's no if, if 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 we do not have quality supply of energy services, it doesn't only affect people who are not managers mm -hmm. of the sector. Everybody. It affects me. Those days when where you having the dumso dumso, I get but to tema and then I get so frustrated that I have lies off. So it affects all of us. So mm -hmm. if it is something that will improve the sector, I do not have a problem. But when we deliberately either twist the facts or pretend to know that the facts exist, mm -hmm. and then we tend to bring out falsehood, especially at a time when not all of us have the advantage of knowing what the true state of this yeah. uh, uh, is. We are not. And sometimes we get up and twist the statements of even people yes. who, and then use them as, yeah. they use issues of the World Bank mm -hmm. as, uh, they say, why would the minority caucus and a ranking member of parliament and someone who had been a deputy minister of energy, mm -hmm. they rely on the World Bank for his source of it. Ah, yeah, when he sure. knows that he himself has the capability and capacity to be able to acquire all the pieces of information he needs to make a very informative uh, contribution in terms of public discourse. So I really do not know the yeah. motive of this, but if the motive was I mean, for corrective measures within the energy sector, they failed to uh, You know, I, I need to be sincere and I need to say this on air. I mean, when I had the press conference, I call, I have friends in the MPP, and <laughs> most of them were shocked. <laughs> Listening to the content, they, were, they thought that, Master, this thing is it's not time sensitive because they, he should uh, have averted his mind to the current happenings yeah. and then addressed or couched the statement. As, they were surprised. Yeah. And one begins to wonder if it was even consultatively done within the rank and file of the even MPP mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. But I mean, this is a matter for their own internal mm -hmm. politics. But uh, the allegation that uh, monies from the uh, petroleum sector mm -hmm. has been allocated to GMPC. Does it come with any foundation at all, in your opinion? You see, again, and mm -hmm. this is the thing, and I had occasion to talk to some, of, um, uh, debate some of their, their, their people on air today. You see, if you look at them, uh, as a country, we all decided that, look, we have found oil, and we are going to definitely sell this oil, 
uh, resource mm -hmm. and derive re revenue from it. That this revenue, by virtue of our past experience in other sectors of our natural resources, like mining and other things, we must find a way of managing the particular resource to ensure that we have a positive way of dealing with the issues. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what happened. As a country, we said that, look, let's find a law that will govern how we even disperse this revenue. Okay. So Talking about the law, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. I need to catch you. Let me do some quick exercise. Uh, when I come back, uh, Mr. Edward Bauer would continue with his rather eloquent and intelligent submission on this platform. Stay with me. I go for a quick commercial break. I will be right back. Hello and thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, you are watching Majority Caucus live on your Moti TV with me, Ali Dawood. Uh, not too long ago, we had the lectures from Dr. Sam Juna also calling on Ghanaians uh, to acknowledge the efforts put in by a uh, person of Mr. Chachuchikata and uh, the oil fines in Ghana. I'm sure we all remember how the MPP was grateful in court to Chachu. They thought that the best uh, way to uh, show him their appreciation was to put him behind bars. Uh, we will tell you more about that as the discussion in the studio continues. Yeah, Dr. Bauer, Mr. Bauer, <laughs> or of course, <laughs> on the way to get, get in there. Yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, you were telling us about uh, this allocation of petroleum funds to GMPC. Yeah, so I was saying that, so by virtue, wh what Ghana decided to do was to enact a law known as the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. Yeah. The Petroleum uh, Revenue Management Act uh, spells as clearly how the revenues are supposed to be used. Yeah. Now, if you look at the Petroleum Revenue Management Act, it talks about the fact that for the first four, uh, for the first three years uh, after the coming into effect of uh, the law, 40% of the revenue mm -hmm. should be allocated to GMPC. Straight. This one is not GMPC, what I said. It mm -hmm. is not. There's it's the annual, uh, what do you call it, budget allocation mm -hmm. for capacity building for MMDAs. Okay. It is not for GMPC. Mm -hmm. So you see that, and I've heard Kukwati move, Kukwati, yeah, and I mentioned Kukwati also spoke to it. Moving from radio station to radio station, say they should point to which budget yeah. item says that GMPC should spend 112 million on capacity building. There has not been a budget item because there was no allocation for that. The allocation was for capacity building for MMDAs. And once again, he's also a member of parliament. Parliament. On the so energy for committee. you to state that, and anytime you draw the attention to the fact that they have a copy of the audited accounts of GMPC for 2011, and GMPC has come to defend that. And as I speak to you, mm -hmm. just in May, okay. GMPC again was in, what do you call it, in parliament to meet the uh, uh, Senate Committee on, uh, what do you call it, Energy and, mines, energy and mines, to yes. talk to them about the activities and in terms of the allocations that have been given to them. Which so, Kuku is a Kuku member. Kuku, member. We, uh, uh, Honorable uh, yeah, Katie Hammond is the ranking member, member, member of that group. So that is why I think that there is a mischief and they create, uh, you know, sometimes, and I, this is an appeal not only to um, um, those who address the press conference, yeah. but to all Ghanaians. If we really want to be a group of serious guys yes. in the oil business, we must collectively, irrespective of our political persuasion, build GMPC to be a very strong institution that can engage in serious exploration. Mm. It is only when we can have higher stakes in terms of equity stake in mm. all our blocks okay. that at one time we can now sit there and say that GMPC may be the operator of a particular block. Mm. Say that we will not be getting the stories that last year, you remember what, uh, the Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm said that our total export in terms of revenues for crude oil export was five billion. Yes. But you know the portion for Ghana was only 584 million that is out of the five billion. Absolutely. So the rest went out of this country because of the fact that our participation there is just 13.75. So if as a state. country we really want to really be big players and let this resource inure to the benefit of all Ghanaians, then we must begin to uh, think of how we can build GMPC. Because it is only through GMPC. Yeah. You can't come, for example, to JFM and say, JFM, go and explore this on behalf of Ghana. The PNDC law 84 mandates GMPC to do that on behalf of Ghana. Mm. And until we change that law, let's find a way of building the capacity of GMPC to do that. Mm. I've seen that consistently. GMPC is being painted as if they are 
There's how do I put it? Some devil uh, internet it. Okay. walking well, on the streets of, of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And that anytime you see it, shoot it on site. That mm -hmm. is exactly the picture that has been painted by GMPC. And you see, today you may be in opposition and painting mm -hmm. that. Tomorrow you or will you be come, in the rest of the government. That. And you will need to really build that capacity. So let's let's take our institutions outside politics and build their capacity. Okay. And let the players within that institution because sometimes what then happens is that you are forced to let these players within the institution, mm -hmm. you draw them into politics. Mm -hmm. And because they have to defend the image of the, 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 the what do you call it, the, 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 the corporation. Mm -hmm. And if they are doing that, you will see that it says, uh, GMPC is fighting MPP. Yes. And and it becomes that an is NBC not why we should, we should not affair. draw them into these things. Me, me, and and th th that is why I thought that the, the time is right, perhaps, that I take your views on uh, what Sam Juna said regarding uh, Chachu's, you know, effort in uh, the oil fines and it's the same gmpc what he did the mm -hmm. mpp came to inherit with the same GM, uh, gmpc institution and they used and then i'm sure yeah that, but the, you see, the rest is history you see and i i, I am happy that sometimes uh, there are a few people i hear even in the, uh, at the other side of the political divide who di directly experienced church yeah. who would tell you that look this man is a guy we should look at too. so sometimes when i hear people say that Oh, it was under President Kufour that we got in mm. 2007. And I laugh. I laugh because you don't just get up and just get something. There must be serious preparations towards it. In fact, Ghana is one of the very few countries that even before we found oil, we had a national oil company. Yeah. Most countries will first hit the oil. They'll say, hey, now we have oil. Let's form a national oil company to take care of the oil. Mm -hmm. It was only Ghana. And it was because there was a meticulous preparation in terms of a legal framework, okay. PNDC law 84 mm -hmm. and the PNDC law 64 that established GMP, that established GMPC, the what do you call the uh, the uh, the petroleum agreement model, mm -hmm. contract model, okay. and all those other laws that came into being under the leadership of Chachu Chikata. Today, you have our experienced ge geophysicists, mm -hmm. as serious uh, petroleum engineers at GMPC. We did not train them from 2007. No. These were people who were trained under the leadership of uh, uh, Chikata. And so there are people, and I will always say, wherever there is, I mean, if you see somebody, I wouldn't for a moment say that President Kufo never contributed towards it. And if you still can remember the speech that was delivered by Dr. Otieje on the first oil celebration on the 15th of December 2010, okay. you would see that that speech, and I know that speech so well, because it was a speech that gave a paid tribute to not only this is but from Kuma mm -hmm. to Gerolins to Kofo and to President Mills yeah. because there was serious contribution. But beyond that, there were some people who stand out clearly. that you clearly and someone like uh, 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 Chai Chikata mm -hmm. is like the, the English they, they say, what Primus and Paris. Yeah, yes. You see, he is the main person yes. that you can find, and so the best um, um, to have no less a person than Sam Jonah. Acknowledge that is because anybody who's a keen observer of the oil and gas sector within Ghana would know that Chachu Chikata has a print that you can never erase. Yeah, um, obviously, I mean, that is not in doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, the issues of uh, financial loss of all the uh, of offenses that he was jailed for, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm sure Ghanaians know <laughs> best. But le let, me, let me take your views. I mean, since you are coming from the, uh, the Ministry of Energy and Mines and all that, is there any, you know, special plans or specific, you know, steps being taken uh, to ensure that the energy sector uh, becomes efficient uh, in the nearest future? <coughs> Sorry, that I have oh. to be coughing on air. No, no uh, problem. You allow the majority caucus. Yes. <laughs> um, if you look consistently, mm. we have always indicated that, and that's one of the challenges that uh, the the current administration had when they came to power in 2009 was that, you see you must first have a blueprint and know exactly what you want mm. where are you going because for example if you do not know what you need you can't search for it certainly you understand and so one of the first things that was done was to put up what we call a generation and transmission master plan okay. that gives that was based on our load forecast in terms of demand low demand forecast mm -hmm. our the type of generation we needed to make uh, what was the technologies that we needed to go for? What were the best cost-effective approaches that we could rely on? 
You understand? Mm -hmm. These were things that were made very clear. So from day one, there was a mental picture of where we wanted to go to. And that's why in the uh, policy that was published in 2010, March, the policy categorically stated that by 2050 we wanted to get to the 5,000 megawatts yes. in terms of generation. Mm -hmm. It was not just based on somebody's mm, high fever mm -hmm. thinking that like came and just said, no. Mm -hmm. It was purely based on a well calculated and a well researched okay. uh, document that we did. Now, as I speak to you now, we have put in place, for example, I just give you some timelines. Now, this year, by the end of the year, if we add, we would have been doing about five, 534, then about all the components. Megawatts. Yes. Mm -hmm. For this year alone, that way, the amount of power we, we are adding this year. Okay. Next year, we have what we call the KTPP, that's the uh, thermal power plant. Okay. It's in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, boom, boom. Boom area. Yeah. Um, we are bringing it on stream, and it's going to give us 220 megawatts. Okay. In fact, if you get there, you will see that if you go there and they don't tell that this thing is not working yet, but you think that we have already surprised finished because <laughs> it is there. Um, in 2015, we have major projects that are coming on. We have uh, the West Africa Power Pool plant, which is 440, 450 megawatts. Mm -hmm. We have the same power plant, same power. In fact, mm -hmm. but they call themselves called independent power plants. I see. Which is 340 megawatts. All in this year? Yes, are, that's okay. for uh, 2015. I'm okay. just giving you the timelines. Okay. In fact, 2015 again, you know the president went and cut the sword in Abuazi for the expansion of the Tiku yes. plant mm -hmm. to give it 110, okay. an extension of 110. You see the T3 we just did? Yes. There was a design to do the extension of it, expansion of it, of 175 megawatts. Mm -hmm. We also do have Senate. The Senate plant that was done, and you see, that's another thing that I need to tell you. You see, we create an impression, and one of the, that was one of the uh, message uh, yes. in their addition. They create an impression <laughs> as if VRA does not have even best, uh, how do you call it again, uh, engineers to yeah. be able to man and, and a plant like the of corruption. Look, this Senate plant was built by Ghanaian engineers. Oh. Was built by Ghanaian engineers. And they finished it at record time to give us the 126 megawatts. There's a plan to do an extension of it to give us an additional 110 megawatts. That is the, for 2015. Okay. So this gives you a fair idea okay. that between now, as much as we are adding this, we are making a focus to ensure that, look, we get, and by our own calculations, in fact, if we add what the G, GE, you know, the General Electric, you know, the yeah, General okay. Electric is yeah. talking about 1,000 mm -hmm. megawatts yes. in the uh, Western region. If we add the GE, the truth of the matter is that we'll be doing somewhere around 5,000, uh, 5,400 and something megawatts. So no, we, we actually exceed, exceed by 2015. That. Yes, yeah. we we'll exceed by that. So these are the various plans that we have put in place. Indeed, the president, mm. by his performance agreement, he's signing with all the sector uh, business. Okay. Ask the energy sector, led by the Minister of Energy, mm. Honorable uh, Kofi, Kofi Amabua, mm -hmm. to come and present to see how was he going to get there. Quick. So about a month ago there about, mm -hmm. the minister was there with his team to present to the president mm -hmm. his team. I, I think I met him. The, 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 the timeline as yeah. to how we're going to meet there. Mm -hmm. So these are not things the president just is not sitting and waiting for the minister to come no. and tell him that, oh, we'll get 5,000. It's an effective supervision. Supervision. Mm -hmm. and, and these it is based on this that there's a contract, uh, what you call performance agreement, between the president and the ministers. Mm -hmm. That you perform, or if you don't perform, you must show us why you didn't perform. Good. Otherwise, you, Otherwise you, you, have a, you have a challenge. I, I have some more questions to ask you regarding mm -hmm. the uh, efficiency in the energy sector, but mm -hmm. allow me to go for another commercial break. When I come back, the discussion on the platform, Majority Caucus, Continue. Stay with me. Hello, and thanks for staying with us again. My name is Ali Dawood, and of course, I, unlike Nigel and Alto, I have love for Ghana. Uh, the discussion in the studio continues, and but I will also activate the phone line shortly. But I need you to make this point. Is it true that Ghana, as we stand now, we have no, not even a single liter mm? Mm. of strategic oil reserve? Is it true? That couldn't have been far from the truth. Mm. Couldn't have been far from the truth. Let me tell you why. Um, 
In 2007? Yeah. You know, generally, BOST, which is supposed, its mandate is to, one, to build up a strategic reserves and also to transport petroleum products nationwide. That's the mandate, the core mandate of BOST. Now, what BOST... Uh, and, and the BOST is the bulk the oil... The bulk oil storage and transport. Good. Now, what BOST did was that over a period until 2007, and this was established under the Gerolins regime. The boss was established under, under the Gero yeah, Okay. Under the Gerolins regime. Mm -hmm. And over a period of time, they had built up a strategic reserve for about three months. Okay. Then during the 2007 crisis, energy crisis, mm -hmm. you know, when we entered into this energy crisis, I'm talking about this particular one. Yeah. For every 45 days, government of Ghana, this current government, okay. every 45 days, government of Ghana was buying one, uh, uh, how do you call it, a cargo mm -hmm. of crude. To uh, sorry, to um, VRE, the VRE to generate power. Mm -hmm. Each cargo costs fifty-five million dollars. That is not a small money. So for every forty-five days, government of Ghana needed to cover fifty-five million dollars to buy crude for VRE to generate power for Ghanaians to use. That's a huge sum of money. This was a point that uh, mm -hmm. the MPP government needed to have done in two thousand and seven because they needed uh, crude to be able to run. Okay. Unfortunately, you know what happened? They didn't go for the crude. They rather went for our strategic reserves. Something which is from, meant for, for us to for use, use during, during crisis, crisis times. When mm -hmm. we do not have any chance of getting anywhere. anything where. It's like Bank of Ghana will just decide, uh, government of Ghana will just decide that based on our, our reserves mm -hmm. uh, and uh, reserves that we have. Instead of going to get money to be, or maybe try to raise that, we go and deplete all our reserves and come so, and say so that. So we have it's the no same reserve at all. at all. So that's what they, they went and took that. With the promise that they were going to get boss the money to build up that reserves again. They never did that till 2009. And so the and government left. of NDC inherited, inherited that? Inherited that. Immediately, one of the things that the managers of the sector decided to do was that, look, we need to start building the reserves. Okay. And as I speak to you now, we have at least between six and seven weeks of reserves built. That's from zero to seven, seven weeks? Seven weeks of that built. Now, what boss itself is doing is to ensure that look in as much as we cannot get all the money from central government they will use supplies credit to be able to see how they can build the reserves apart from that they are even increasing their capacity to be able to store as i speak to you in the western region mm -hmm. they are putting up the largest pe uh, petroleum terminal in the whole of west africa mm. okay i get the point i'm mm -hmm. making so it gives you a fair idea that not only are they content with the current reserves that they have in terms of their capacity to even put, uh, increase our reserves, we are even increasing in terms of even the storage capacity. Good. So when, uh, and today again, mm -hmm. I had opportunity to talk to Honorable Katie Hamon about this, and I reminded him that how did, they, uh, how did we uh, deplete our, what do you call it, our strategic reserves? It was under a very ill-informed decision to use a strategic reserve to generate power instead of buying a crude from international market. When, when we were told that the, the, their doom so yes. would end 31st of September. September, which was never existed. Yeah, a date that so was never in that the was, That was one of the problems. So sometimes, uh, some, to put this press conference mm -hmm. in another form, it was more of mistakes, the sins they had committed. Since they were never punished for it, uh, or maybe if they were even punished, maybe I don't know how they were punished. But, but, but how true, let me not cut you, how mm -hmm. true is it that uh, the NDC government is indebted to, uh, you call the bulk oil distribution, yeah, the, yeah B, the BDCs? Look, let me tell you something about that. You remember that before the major increases in the fuel prices, mm -hmm. we said that we had increased our, in terms of our, our under recoveries we were going to pay roughly about two billion because of subsidies. Okay. Because the internet, for about two years, we had not increased fuel prices. You remember? Mm -hmm. We had not increased fuel. We had not increased fuel prices for about two years, and therefore, every time there was an increase, government had to pay the difference as a form of subsidy. Okay. Consistently, we did that for over two years. Now, we the under recoveries were accumulated to almost about two billion. Government has consistently paid this. Now. Just about a few weeks ago, the bulk distribution company said that, look, they have about 700 outstanding that they need to get paid. Because, you know, now MPA is not doing the automatic uh, price adjustment. Mm -hmm. And so they said, oh, they have this outstanding 700 million that they needed to pay. 
I mean, the fact that bulk distribution companies say that the uh, government of Ghana owes us 700 million doesn't mean that we should just go and take 700 million and start paying them. Okay. Government of Ghana felt that, look, we needed to reconcile these figures. Because mm -hmm. it appears our figures were different from mm -hmm. the figures they were quoting. You need to verify. Verify that. Mm -hmm. So that was how the issue was. But now we've been able to reconcile the figures. And we are paying them. So for somebody to make a statement, and you know where the subsidies, uh, what, where the, 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 the issues of uh, indebtedness came. Mm -hmm. The indebtedness came as a result of the accrued under recoveries that we did not yeah. pay as a result of the subsidies yes. that we had on that. So for somebody to say that the government of Ghana is owing BDCs 700 million to the extent that it is crippling their business yes. and that of commercial this banks. Is a threat. It is simply being disingenuous. <laughs> because tr the truth of the matter is that if we had that problem, mm. BDCs will not be bringing crude. If really, okay. we're not paying. Don't bring the finished products. Because they are in business. Yes. And if they're in business yeah, and you're not paying, you think they will come? Let, 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 me, let me announce the phone line. I mean, it's been captured on the screen earlier, but we've been having some um, difficulties. But you still can reach us on 0302-2117-0124. Um, the West African gas, is mm. it in? Good. Yes. Uh, the West African gas pipe, uh, mm -hmm. pipeline was repaired about, um, I think, roughly, I think the first okay. week of le July. Let me talk to this guy. He's from the power uh, producing area, Kusumbu. Uh, hello, Nana. Hello. Hello, Nana. Good Yana. evening. Good evening. Oh, the guy is very good. I like how he speaks. May God bless him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for your Thank contribution. You. I'm sure you heard it. She's more than impressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were telling me about the uh, West African gas. Yes, there was ab about three, about, I think in the first week of July, okay. we started receiving gas from the West African gas. Mm -hmm. They said, Indeed, um, as we speak now, we are taking about, about almost, it, it fluctuates, but around 90 million standard cubic feet Good. of gas. I want there. you to hold on that point. Let me take Malik from Yendi. Hello, Malik. Yes, hello. Good evening. Good evening, Malik. Yes. I want to ask you, uh, you are the host. Uh, the issue of uh, West African gas land, when was it uh, effective in Ghana? Okay, you would answer that. Thank That's you very much. Question. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, you are on the West African gas. Mm. It looks like somebody wants to preempt your submission. Yeah, your submission about mm -hmm. when the pipeline. So I think, I think a week ago, eh, about uh, the first week of July, mm -hmm. we started receiving because they had finished with the pipeline. So effectively, okay. the, the pipeline started becoming operational in the first week of July. In the first week of July. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let me take this caller. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello, yeah. Yeah, your name and where yes. are you calling from? I'm calling from Shijab. Uh, yeah, I'm just my name. Okay, you're on air. Yeah, I'm very much impressed. Uh, by the way, I'm allowed to continue to your program. Okay. Keep it up. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. Yeah, so, with the, and as we speak now, mm -hmm. we, we're getting roughly around 19 million standard cubic feet of gas a day. Okay. So that gives us some, even though the contractor volumes, we've not gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. Because the contractor volume should be somewhere around 120, one, 110, 120 uh, million standard cubic feet of gas. Okay. But now we're receiving about 90. But gradually, we would get there. Okay. Because we'll get to the 110. So now we are receiving the gas, and that's why Asogle is working. It's working because they've been and complaining, then, uh, yes, you know. And then other, because, of course, it is a bit frustrating to have... Um, I, I remember watching a, a whole documentary on yes, this. Yes, uh, having a plant sitting down, and for mm. almost a year, waiting you are not gas. running, waiting for gas to run. Mm. And unlike other plants, for example, VRA had this plant that could have dual fuel. Mm. So when the gas was not coming, they converted to... Okay. Fuel. But even a VRA is very excited. You know why? Tell me. The cost of generating power using natural gas is just a third of the co cost of producing mm. uh, power using the, the, the uh, crude. Uh, crude. Mm. Because the GVRA was spending about $27 million a day mm. to generate power. Now they spend roughly about $9 million to generate oh, power. Oh, that, that's far, so cheaper. That's far cheaper. But, but would this affect the cost of uh, uh, utility in terms of for consumers? You know, are they going yeah, to pay obviously, less? Yeah, but obviously if, 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 if uh, PURC mm. decides to now go back to the uh, automatic uh, tariff adjustment. Okay. It will. Because you remember sometimes, I think last year or last two years, sometime like that there was a time when the price of uh, um, the uh, utility mm -hmm. prices went down and the reason they gave was that because we spent more gas mm -hmm. in producing uh, power instead of crude oil. Yeah, so oh, okay. Um, it looks like clearly I have run out of time even though I have more questions on uh, the supply of crude to GMPC and the matters related to that and mm -hmm. the processing and all that. 
Uh, but I'm sure that um, when we have the opportunity again, we would invite Mr. Uh, Edward Bauer to come to the studio and enlighten us further on the issues of the energy sector. Um, but let me quickly say big thank you to uh, the National Planning Committee for organizing a very successful uh, one-year anniversary of the commemoration of the passing on of the late President Mills. And thank you all to the good people of Ghana for participating, those who came to the church, those who went to the mosque to pray, everybody, uh, we are most grateful. We'll be here on Thursday, and uh, we are sure to come your way with another exciting edition of Majority Caucus. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the show. I'll see you here on Thursday. Bye-bye.